Aloha, my name is Duration, and I'm the host of Think Tech Hawaii, Finding Our Future. We are a show here every other Wednesday, 1 to 1.30, and just exploring issues that are relevant to our generation, younger people, and anyone interested in the future, which is everyone. So today I have my best friend here, Anna Camacho, and me and her are both co-founders of the Good Food Movement, and we're working on making a positive movement locally for people to make good food choices. So thank you for being here, Anna. I'm stoked to be here. Thanks for having me again. Yes. So the <laughs> reason, kind of to give background um, for our conversation today is to really explore the vegan movement because it's something that we're both a part of, we're really passionate about and something that can be quite triggering, emotional, controversial on both, you know, quote unquote, side of, of the movement. Mm -hmm. And so we're just exploring this. And I think the goal for us is to turn veganism into something that is not scary or exclusive, but that is really inclusive and meaningful and shares a positive vision for our collective community, you know, everyone, hopefully. So um, can you maybe share something on your thoughts on this issue and your personal experience? Yeah, um, I think I love talking about veganism and the reason why we created the good food movement in the first place was to make a movement that was inclusive and accessible and community oriented. Uh, because when I first went vegan, I was, I stayed in a vegan commune. So it was like a vegan world separated intentionally from the real world and um, when I came back out after six months of living there I found myself to be like really militant um, like judging others uh, like that might have ate me or like weren't vegans which was pretty much everyone at the time and um, yeah I just saw that my I didn't have that much impact but when I got together with like you and our core group of friends and I just became more joyful in my life and um, didn't really force my way on anybody. I just let my lifestyle do the talking. I felt like that was more of a positive impact. Um, so yeah, I just feel like this is an issue that's very pertinent to the movement in and of itself, making veganism inclusive and accessible and realizing it's at the intersection intersection of many uh, social justice movements out there. Yeah, and that's something I think most vegans or people who are on this journey go through is they, at least for me, I'll speak from my experience, when mm -hmm. I was 19-ish and I made the switch to going vegan, it became very upsetting to me that other people weren't making their transition and were continuing to live in this way that was very harmful to our planet and to billions or trillions of animals and to their own health. And it was just mm -hmm. kind of a mind-blowing experience and it was upsetting, it was very emotional. And then, yeah, over time you realize, you know, like as important and emotion, important the issue is and emotional you are, you have to learn to be effective and to be effective in your communication and advocacy is to be loving and inclusive and one what one, one of the examples i like to share is i was vegetarian i think for seven years before i went vegan and was still eating tons of dairy and eggs and i was working at this little cafe the spot here on king street pretty well known and they usually have vegan options and there was a guy who came in and he was like oh do you guys have any vegan options here and i was like yeah they're over here and these are what you can get and I was like, oh, how long have you been vegan? And how do you feel? And he was so nice. He was just like, I feel amazing. Like, I love it. It's been very easy. And yeah, it'd be cool if you try it. I think it's just like a great decision that I've made in my life. And that was really a turning point for me where I started to open myself up. I bought a book about it. And that's what really made the switch. But meeting that human that was kind, relatable, peaceful, non-judgmental, I think was critical for me to even consider making the switch to veganism, which I had previously had categorized as extreme and, you know, annoying and unbearable and just kind of like something I didn't want to invest 
in in my decision making every day um mm -hmm. and yeah i guess that's a really important message that i want to share with our community yeah i think um whether or not you know these interactions turn people vegan uh you're still planting seeds you know so that one interaction stays with you even though that wasn't like the person that made you go vegan it was probably a documentary or a book or something um that was a positive representation of that group of people and so when we like call ourselves vegans or we put the vegan bumper sticker on our car we have to remember that it's a responsibility mm -hmm. um and people i think just as humans we're more drawn to people that are warm that are kind and friendly like i read that you could like walk in a room and like you it, you immediately know which person like you would ask for directions or something you know so it's this just human instinct that we have to be drawn towards people with that um, aura i feel like so yeah, and one of the experiences we had the other day, uh, uh, it was kind of like a farmer's market, and mm -hmm. we asked this girl who had a bakery set up, and she had, like, her cakes and cookies, and we were like, oh, do you ha have anything vegan here because we love dessert? And she's like, no, I don't. Like, sometimes I do, but not today. And she just kind of, like, started asking us, like, oh, how long have you both been vegan? And we were just, like, telling her, and she kind of, like, had a moment and she was like yeah well you guys look really healthy and fit so i it seems like that's working out for you and we were uh -huh. like yeah it feels really good and it was like <laughs> a very simple interaction but it was pleasant and i just find that that's mm -hmm. more effective so much more effective um i conversely to that i used to work at a juice bar and i remember this guy coming up and he was like do you have any vegan options and we had a, a few i was like all our smoothies or um, you know, we have these prepackaged salads, and he was like, oh, that's all, you know, and like, he was like, never mind, and just walked away, and for me, that was like, wow, this person's like really rude, and like, the only thing I know about him, not even his name, is that he's vegan, you know, so that's like an association that you make with that kind of just that, that energy, which is not everybody, and it's not always fair, you know, he might have been having a bad day or whatever, but I just feel like if you're going to call yourself something, whether it's like vegan, I don't want to say veganism is a religion or Christian, that we do have a responsibility. Um, and I know like there's a lot of also this divisiveness in the movement in general. And it's important to remember that we're all on the same team, you know, like who gets to uh, call people vegan or not? Or are you vegan enough or you know, like, I'm going to go on record and say that right now I'm not a perfect vegan, but I do my best. And I still claim that because that is the, that is the state of consciousness that, um, that I identify with. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, <laughs> I mean, you have an experience where online that, <laughs> that wasn't very pleasant with other vegans. Uh, you want to share that? <laughs> Yeah, and I think that is a, an experience that kind of triggered this conversation is the Facebook, you know, the infamous Facebook argument. You know, we've all <laughs> probably been involved in one in our lives mm -hmm. at some point, and some people are really good at avoiding them, which I should probably get better at. But I, I posted something on my Facebook that was like, you know, I've been vegan for eight years, and I would like the vegan concept to become more inclusive and and I said most vegans I know slip up or cheat in certain situations like they're traveling and there are like none to very little options or they're at an event and there's free food that's already been ordered like they're not buying um, any animal products and there's nothing else for them to eat and so I kind of shared that because it's representative of most people I know who are vegan and even if it's once or twice a year um, I don't think we need to hide around that and be afraid and and I kind of ended it like you know let's just be inclusive and um, I think if we judged each other less on both sides vegans and non-vegans just like less judgment more inclusivity more understanding that we're all 
trying to do the right thing, you know, and nobody's mm-hmm. perfect. Like even vegans are, you know, like a lot of vegans just eat Oreos and junk food and that has its whole host of suffering that it, you know, puts on our soil and animals and the ocean and, and our environment as a whole. So we don't need to be like pointing fingers. So regardless, I put out a pretty positive post. Um, and then these vegans that I know just kind of came out in force and there, and it was only a couple of them, but, and there was, you know, like dozens of positive comments, but the mm-hmm. couple people that were the squeaky wheels and got most of my energetic attention were really just like pushing this, um, judgment it was just like so ironic they were just like Mm -hmm. you're not vegan if you cheat you know like that's ridiculous and you know like i can't believe you don't care about the animals and i was sharing with them like this nuance of like you know well if you don't buy it and that becomes food waste like that's potentially more disrespectful to our food system and the animals and they're like oh but you're eating it and it just became a whole kind of like degenerated argument where it was just really like pointing fingers like you're not good enough, I'm more pure, you don't belong because you and whoever else you're talking about are not perfect, you know, and you should be more pure because this is a moral cause. And I think uh, most vegans go through a pure phase where they are really strong-willed and they refuse to eat that stuff. And some situationally that I know, like really go through phases of like, it was really hard when I was with my family because there was nothing else to eat and I felt this social pressure. And mm-hmm. whatever those nuances are, it's all very real. And we need to just accept that that exists and just like understand that, you know, we're all on the same side, whether you're perfectly vegan or you're close or you call yourself plant based or you're 99% vegetarian. Like, anyone who's on this spectrum of like trying to make a positive difference through their food choice based on the information they have and the circumstance they're in should be welcomed in to a movement that is we all have a shared vision of like peace mm-hmm. and nonviolence and and harmony with nature yeah. um so it was a very interesting and frustrating experience because i hate wasting energy Um, arguing with people that are essentially we have the same vision and goals and we're fighting over semantics and situations and um, I find that to be a waste of time so I just wanted to like (laughs) do this you know episode with you so we can just like talk about what this is and why people are always so like upset and triggered and how we get beyond that and be actually more Mm -hmm. effective yeah absolutely I think we have a shared vision and maybe that um you know, whether you're vegan for the, the animals or the health or moral, environmental, uh, they're, they're, they're all intertwining issues. So it, it is a waste of energy to, to divide the movement, you know, because we're stronger together. So, um, and it's a waste of time to also try and be perfect, you know? If you drive a car or you enjoy fireworks, you are potentially, you know, um, participating in activities that use animal products um so it's like or use plastic bags you know these are these are everyday things that we can't get away from sometimes um so i I don't think it's about being perfect i think it's about doing the best that we can and we you know we definitely are um and (laughs) yeah i'm i think uh i think at the same market that we were at um we were walking around and we have some vegan friends that are running a booth and I was eating the superfood ball and they're like, doesn't that have honey in it? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, yeah, but they use their honey, you know, from like this local um, beekeeper or whatever. And I'm just like, I just, at that point, I let things roll off, you know, it's just like not, it is a waste of energy, but I can kind of feel that judgment as well. So yeah. like, oh, yeah, you're not vegan enough right now I like to eat it well we're gonna go to break and then we can go into honey and all the little okay. nuances and how we address that okay hi I'm Rusty Komori host of Beyond the Lines I have a TV show based on my book which is also called Beyond the Lines and it's about leadership creating a superior culture of excellence and building winning teams we are having a fun drive for Think Tech Hawaii 
And please, 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 please help us keep these shows going. Please go on our website, thinktechhawaii.com, to donate. Thank you. Aloha and welcome. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. Uh, every other Monday at 1 o'clock, I am here on deck with various guests talking about different topics of the world and the ocean and international law, different areas where we all have seen and want to travel to and learn about. Please join me for my next Law Across the Sea program. Aloha. Hi, I'm Duration, and I'm here today with Anna Camacho for the show Finding Our Future on Think Tech Hawaii every other Wednesday, 1 to 1.30 p.m. And today we are talking about veganism and something we're super passionate about, something that can be very triggering and emotional for both vegans and non-vegans. And we're exploring this idea of transitioning veganism from something that becomes scary and judgmental and purist to something that's more inclusive and loving and understanding, which I think are really pivotal values of the intent of the vegan movement in the first place, and starting to include humans in the non-judgment and non-violence that the uh, definition of veganism espouses. So I'm here with Anna. Thank you, Anna, for being here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we were just talking about honey, which I think is a really funny and uh, interesting part of veganism because I think it's like 50-50, like half mm -hmm. about half the vegans I know are like no honey and it's not a big deal. It's just like they don't participate and they use agave uh -huh. and maple syrup. And the other mm -hmm. half, they're very like lax about it. And um, at least for me, like I've talked to a lot of beef farmers who mm -hmm. really are like contributing to regenerative ag and um, the health of pollinators because bees in a lot of ecosystems do need that support because um, their ecosystems are collapsing in many ways. And so there are these like regenerative bee farmers mm -hmm. and when it's like raw, local, organic, and, and I know my beekeeper and I know they're not exploitative, um, I don't feel moral guilt from consuming that honey and um, mm -hmm. I don't judge people on either side especially if you don't know anything about the honey industry but yeah it's just funny how it becomes like well I'm a vegan that doesn't eat honey and then yeah. there's vegans who are like well I'm a vegan that does yeah. eat honey <laughs> and it's just like you know I'm just like let's just accept everyone if you want to teach people about the honey industry like go for mm -hmm. it but like we don't need to like give each other weird vibes and judge each other as we're Mm -hmm. working out all the nuances and various issues that veganism includes. Yeah, I think if it weren't for beekeepers, um, bees would probably be extinct at this point. Yeah, they're having a... And then if bees go extinct, then then we're to follow because I, a, it's because of them that we have most of our food. Mm -hmm. So I'm all for local beekeepers. I'm all for um supporting them so they can do what they do uh, because you know if you get stuck in a little bubble where it's like oh it's the animals and um because honey is an animal product therefore i just reject it it's like an opportunity to learn more about the industry which i am not an expert on so i won't speak but i have beekeeper friends that have told me that they help the bees grow in these colonies get strong enough so these predator beetles can't come in their hives and then they put them back out in the wild and for that they are gifted with honey and honeycombs and by selling it um, they get to continue what they're doing so it's a you know there are multiple facets to veganism and there are multiple you know faces um, yeah. of helping animals whether or not you cut out all animal products and byproducts, I think it's important to honor and respect mm -hmm. and extend that compassion out, not just for animals, but um, humans, which are animals, but um, <laughs> as well. So we're all in the same boat, for sure. Yeah, and the definition of veganism kind of is laid out as a um, somebody who 
is vegan abstains from mm -hmm. consuming or purchasing or using animal products like leather and you know anything that's tested or um, kills animals and you know I think there's a opportunity here to redefine and adjust kind of that definition because we we have found a lot of nuance in um, the vegan movement and vegan consciousness you know and like honey is one example where you know you can actually rebuild um, ecosystems for bees and help their populations and not be extractive um, and of course mass-produced honey and mass-produced anything even apples mm -hmm. are going to be extremely harmful to the plants and soil and the animals um, and so we I just think you know, it, it should be adjusted to talk about nonviolence, you know, and if something mm -hmm. is nonviolent and regenerative from a systems level, you know, I think that that would qualify as vegan. And, and there's an opportunity here for us to have a really cool conversation about um, mm -hmm. what it means to be a conscious eater. And I think with animals, it's a little bit more black and white. It's like you kill an animal and you don't have to, you know, and mm -hmm. we can really protect a lot of animals from being exploited, commodified, bred and essentially um, stripped of their freedom as a as an animal um, mm -hmm. and really address that issue um, and so I think with that it's kind of like black and white but then with other things it's like nuance like I had an ex-boyfriend who had a pet chicken her name was Domi and um, she was not caged and she was free to move about the neighborhood and she always came back and he fed her organic oats and she got to an age where she was laying eggs and you know they're not fertilized she's just like giving them their extra mm -hmm. and she's not in a cage she's not exploited at all she's free to leave and never come back and i did try the eggs and i didn't love it because i haven't had eggs in a long time but it didn't feel like a transgression to me like i didn't feel like i no longer was vegan mm -hmm. because there's nuance <laughs> and i think it's just yeah. important for people to realize and even if you just buy something and it's just like an egregious act of non-veganism <laughs> you don't get kicked out of the club forever and have to start no. over the next day like i've only been vegan for one day even though before that i was vegan for 20 years like you're allowed to make a mistake you know and yeah. i just think it's important to be forgiving and um just say like yeah, yeah we're it's, we're still in the same movement we're still allies and like let's do this mm -hmm. together yeah absolutely i think that you i mean you bring up a really good point life is life looks very different for each of us and we all have our own stories and context and you know i mean there's an issue of accessibility and you know food deserts too so who are who am i to say you know from this privilege standpoint that like someone's not vegan enough if they're doing their best um you know like in a perfect world we could have everybody vegan um but that would look like you know it would look like a home homogenous world and that's boring and that would um you know it would discount and silence a lot of voices of like color and a lot of like women's voices too who like most of the movement is made up of women so i think that um it's important to look through all of these lenses and you know if you really want to know why somebody's doing something um then ask questions like people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care mm -hmm. you know and yeah. so they like it's, <laughs> I think it's very privilege, privilege illiterate to call someone not vegan enough if you don't know their story and you don't know what they're, they've been through. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And yeah, I think it's, it's just really funny because it is a movement around that is inherently about compassion and inclusivity and love above all and understanding um, that some, some of the most judgmental people I've met are, are vegan. And non vegans, you know, yeah. <laughs> that hate vegans. And, but um, yeah. <laughs> and, but we're all just human under the same roof, you know, mm -hmm. and struggling. Mm -hmm. And imperfect in so. one way or another. And um, I, for me, it's always been like about kind of like the relevance to how a lot of people are Christian, you know, or mm -hmm. um, Catholic. And there are certain rules within that that they may break. And it's very mm -hmm. occasional, could be like, you know once or twice in their whole life and it's not like <laughs> yeah. they have to leave christianity and like not identify as a christian anymore because wow. 
God is forgiving, and um, mm-hmm. so should vegans, I think, because we are <laughs> all human, and yeah. we, um, I think it benefits all of us spiritually, mm-hmm. emotionally, and as a movement to mm-hmm. uh, open our arms to more people and um, create safe spaces for confessing you know it was just like funny Mm -hmm. that i was like confessing to something that i do like once or twice a year like take a free cookie at a conference and it just spiraled into like a two-hour argument about why that was or Mm -hmm. wasn't the worst thing ever to do um and if i was or wasn't wasn't. vegan (laughs) yeah and like it's i will stick up for myself and i want to listen to Mm -hmm. other people and it just i think it's it's exciting for me to um visualize veganism as uh consciousness and something that so many people are a part of that we can participate in together and we can um really visualize a world without factory farming and without egregious Mm -hmm. animal cruelty um and not you know spend all this time fighting with each other because we're all works in progress and um you know i'm working on being less judgmental every day as a vegan and yeah i wish kind of we all would do the same so that more people feel excited to be a part of this you know this movement that we're a part of absolutely compassion and there's a really good um documentary that came out a prayer for compassion you know there's uh it's about just like the the spirituality of it all and how multiple in uh religions intersect on this um one um concept of compassion whether it's like jesus or muhammad or you know the hindu um I think that it's really good for viewers to watch if they are like more religious, even if you're not. Um, so yeah, I think that's a good action step after this, if you're curious. Yeah. And we also have a couple of events coming up. Yeah, share them. If you're also curious. Left. Yeah, for sure. We This Sunday, um, we have an eat shop, which is a cooking workshop and a dinner experience at Vegan Hills. If you follow us on Instagram or Facebook at Good Food Movement, you can find the link to the tickets. And do you want to share the chocolate party? Yeah, so we've had a chocolate party idea. We're going to do it on Valentine's Day. Um, Chocolate was something I didn't think I could eat as a vegan. So Valentine's Day, 7 to 10 p.m. at Vi Vi Collective. Lots of desserts and goodies there. So please come follow us at Good Food Movement to learn more. Okay, that's our show. Yay. Thank you so much for being here, Anna. It was really important and fun. Thank you. I love you. It was so fun. I love you. <laughs> <laughs>